Hi, um, my name is Sherry Antwine, and I am uh, a colleague here with uh, uh, Pete Forsyth, who is over there with the globe behind him, um, of News on Wiki, uh, 2020 campaign. Uh, News on Wiki has been around for two years now, and um, uh, this is the second iteration. The first iteration, um, Pete's going to let you know a little bit about in a second. But before we continue on, we have two special guests with us from the Comedians of the Caribbean User Group. Brendan Sullivan, who leads the communications for Wikimedians of the Caribbean, of which I'm a part and uh, um, a lead organizer. And we also have, um, also in the leadership, Ian Ramjohn, who is not only a veteran in the Caribbean community on Wikipedia, but has um, also been involved in Wiki education and um, in uh, several projects on Wikipedia uh, dealing with the Caribbean. So thank you so much both for joining us today. And Pete, if you could just let us know a little bit about the project that we're here to talk about right now. Sure. So the basic idea of News on Wiki is it's a campaign to add information about local newspapers to Wikipedia and also to Wikidata. Uh, and the, real, the reason for it is to help the general public uh, get a better handle on what is or isn't a real news source. So frequently people will search the web uh, if they encounter a, a news source that they're not familiar with. And if a Wikipedia article exists, Google will present that information in a knowledge panel. So people will pretty quickly get a sense, oh, it was founded 100 years ago, or it's won multiple Pulitzer Prizes or something like that that'll help them establish that it's a real newspaper. Uh, but there are thousands of legitimate newspapers that don't have any kind of presence on Wikipedia at all. And so this is really a campaign just to fill in that gap, just to get more and more newspapers, uh, at least a basic level of coverage. Uh, so in the initial round that you talked about in 2018, we, we, uh, we just went uh, nationwide across the US. Uh, we added about three to 400 articles about newspapers, as well as improving a whole lot of others. Um, and this time we're focusing a bit more narrowly. So we're focusing in one phase on uh, Washington State, uh, uh, another topic is black owned newspapers and the one that's relevant to the wiki carry fest is we're focusing on newspapers of or about the Caribbean so either based in the Caribbean or newspapers for a Caribbean audience in the United States. Um, and so in this call, I think we're going to uh, get started on on uh, sort of getting a handle on what newspapers there are that need a Wikipedia article and what kinds of reference materials there might be that could help us build those. Thanks so much, Pete. And it's exciting to join you uh, on this because um, I know that you guys did a lot of uh, amazing work in 2018. So to be a part of this with, uh, in, in this iteration is really exciting. And I think it'll make a difference concerning some areas that really aren't covered uh, on Wiki, which uh, really uh, black owned newspapers and um, Caribbean uh, focused newspapers are a part. And, um, one of the things that, uh, and also it's, it's great to be covering uh, Washington State as well, because that is also a, a sample that uh, would shed light on um, local newspapers that also may be missing or, or we need more information on those papers. And as um, newspapers are um, starting to have some uh, even more issues with um, the pandemic raging, but also even before that, um, with, with the move to go online, it's more important than ever to um, get a sense of the newspapers that are in, um, you know, that are being used not only on Wikipedia, but in general, and also um, the information associated with them. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, Brendan, um, I know that uh, uh, we were talking about earlier a little bit about the newspapers that are available in the Caribbean. Can you tell us a little bit about the newspapers in an um, in your area. Absolutely. Um, so I, joining guys from Jamaica, um, I think um, the uh, newscape, you know, the newspaper landscape in Jamaica is pretty unique in the sense of um, we have had, um, you know, print media much, much like the rest of the Caribbean for quite a while, but um, currently um, in Jamaica, um, the RJR um, Gleaner Communications Group somehow has become uh, the largest um, newspaper organization, for instance, in, in, in the Caribbean. And RGR Gleaner, which 
the name Gleaner in and of its name uh, refers to the Jamaica Gleaner, which is one of the uh, older newspapers um, to have existed in the region. And um, uh, Jamaica and also, you know, other newspapers in, in the Caribbean, which of course I would, uh, you know, hand over to, 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 to Ian to talk about, especially as it relates to Trinidad and Tobago. Um, you know, these newspapers have largely been around and have helped to document um, a number of, you know, the various issues that have, you know, passed, you know, throughout the years in and around and, and centered around the Caribbean. Um, but the Gleaner is only a very, very, very small part of the conversation as it relates to the wider uh, need to help to document and to bring to life, um, you know, the various different sources of information that exist, um, especially as it relates to print media in the Caribbean. So, you know, you have those, and you can see here on the screen, you have those from the Jamaica Gleaner, those have the Jamaica Observer, there's also the government-owned um, information service from the government of Jamaica called the Jamaica Information Service. Um, and there have been several others. There's also a regional version of the Jamaica Observer that's called the Observer West, that is um, sort of nestled within the Jamaica Observer um, at certain points. Um, and you also have other ones such as the Western Mirror, which unfortunately is red linked, as you can see here, but is still one that is widely circulated. And being that I am from Western Jamaica is a publication that I also have access to. And I think that is an example of the you know, importance of a, you know, uh, of an outreach initiative such as News on Wiki, where we need to get those red links to blue links and to even help some of those blue links become even better, bring them up to, you know, good articles, to A-list articles, to, to, to feature lists. Um, it is so important to understand that whilst, yes, it's good to have these sources and to have them, you know, blue linked and you know, uh, you know, up to a certain standard of, 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 of um, you know, um, quality standard, as it were. Um, but it's also important as it relates to the legitimization of these print publications in the wider sphere as it relates to, 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 to Wikipedia, Commons, and so on and so forth. Um, for instance, one could, you know, if you come from the Caribbean and you understand uh, the difficulty of using certain sources from the Caribbean in certain kinds of documentation that you'd like to put on Wikipedia, then you very much understand that having, you know, legitimized sources and having these sources, you know, be viewed as legitimate is very important. And this is one of the central aims of which News on Wiki is trying to achieve. And, you know, I'm very heartened and I'm very thrilled to know that you know, a part of a partnership is to also include um, within the remit also that of the Caribbean. And even going much further than that, because the Caribbean, you know, the idea of the Caribbean extends beyond, you know, the group of islands and some mainland territories, but also extends into even talking about, you know, um, black uh, owned newspapers. And of course, that was something that, um, you know, Sherry had touched on, some that P had touched on, um, you know, for instance, there are other publications that exist, such as that of The Voice UK, which I think is an offshoot of uh, the um, RGR Gleaner Group. Um, that is a, a, a um, I think it's a monthly publication, if I'm not mistaken, or by a weekly um, publication that is, um, you know, disseminated around the um, Caribbean, the, the um, British Caribbean uh, community. And so there are various uh, kinds of, you know, uh, different parts of the experience that we need to address. And News on Wiki is a very important first step in moving towards that direction. So, you know, I'm very happy and very thankful to all that are, are looking uh, in this direction. So I wonder, I wonder, Brandon, if I could um, uh, sort of turn part of what you were discussing into a, a question for Ian. Um, Ian, I wonder, as an experienced Wikipedian, if you could maybe talk us through a little bit what it looks like. Like, let's let's imagine a scenario where, like, I write an article about something in Jamaica, and I try to use the an, an article in the I, I write a Wikipedia article, but then I'm trying to use articles from the newspaper, the Jamaica Gleaner, as a source. Now, maybe some Wikipedia editor. Is looking at that and thinks, oh well, that's not a very good source. 
what difference does it make whether there's a Wikipedia article about the Jamaica Gleaner in a case like that? Does that make, can you, can you kind of talk us through the dynamics of, of that kind of, uh, that kind of discussion? Sure, um, and probably the Gleaner is not the best example because sure. that's pretty well recognized. But yeah. certainly if you're, if you're looking at a source and it's, there's a link in the source to an article about the thing, you're much more likely to trust. If you're going to assume that other people have looked at this and have decided that this is a notable source. If, it's, if there's no article about it, you're going to run into the, I mean, you're going to then wonder, is this, is this any good? Is this a real source? Now, some people are going to go to the reliable sources um, uh, notice board right. and ask. So just to just to kind of capture what you're talking about here, I just pulled up the article about uh, about Jamaica, and we're just looking at the the footnotes for it. So the very first reference it refers to the Irish Times, but you can't click on it. So that's what mm -hmm. you're talking about, right? Like whether another editor has like one click access to what is the Irish Times, what is the, the yeah. yeah. But and the other thing you see right here is Irish Times CIA Factbook. Factbook. Uh huh. There's mm -hmm. nothing about, you know, nothing local. There's number six is a statistical this, institute. So this Jamaica. is an external link you're saying? Yeah. No, yeah. There's, there's nothing Jamaican. It's all, ah, yes. It's all coming from the, oh, the developed who are from the first world. And of course, uh, I don't know how, I mean, there are a hundred and, <laughs> wow, there are 268 footnotes here. So we're just looking at the first, maybe there are some local ones in there, but oh, yeah. There, the, the there very, are. There yeah. are, but I, I, I do want to point out pretty quickly, um, you know, one of the important parts of the conversation is I remember in the more earlier days of when I started editing on Wikipedia, uh, there was a conversation, it still is a conversation and a debate happening in the community as to the exact figure of the population of Kingston. Now, anyone mm -hmm. would think that, you know, of course, you know, this is a city, of course, there's official documentation to suggest what the population of the city is. And for some people, there are, uh, you know, certain ideas, you know, the, the, the Statistical Institute of Jamaica has a certain idea as to what they constitute as what we call the Kingston metropolitan area, which is distinct and apart from the city of Kingston, which is distinct and apart from the parish of Kingston, which is distinct mm -hmm. from the other parish that is attached to, which is called the parish of St. Andrew. And the only way in which you're going to find that kind of nuance is through asking local sources. However, because of the fact that those local sources are very elusive, there still exists a tug, and, you know, a tug of war back and forth about what that figure is. So currently, I think on a Google info box, the uh, documentation there, I think it says somewhere in the region of about a million or about 937,000, while some people would actually go back to about 667. There are about 1,000 people living in Kingston and St. Andrew, which is a huge disparity. And again, highlights the fact that there aren't readily available sources that you know, have you know, one, two click access to that kind of information. And while any kind of intrepid, you know, um, Wikipedian would go and dig deep and find that information, but then who is to say that that information is absolutely accurate if it is not coming from a source that has been validated and has been seen as legitimate? And there lies mm -hmm. the problem, you understand? So, 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 go ahead. Sorry, um, I think a really good example was something that popped up recently. Uh, there was an article that was, somewhat promotional in its tone, but, and it was nominated for deletion. The hmm. only source was, so there was a source saying that he was a member of, he had been appointed, I think, to the West Indies Cricket Board. Hmm. And to me, that's obviously notable. I mean, anybody who's on the West Indies Cricket Board must be, notable. must be notable. But the source was, uh, newspaper in maybe Grenada that I'd never heard of or news site. So, you know, then I wanted to make sure rather than just in the deletion debate say, well, this is obvious. I wanted to, to yeah. you have to point to a source and I had to look at the source and spend a while trying to determine, is this a reliable source or is this just some random news website or you right. know, like a blog? And to do that required not just digging 
into what information was on their website, which wasn't that that good, but then trying to see if other people ref other um, reliable sources seemed to reference that one. So mm -hmm. it was it was a real challenge because there was no access and very little information online. But I needed that source to say, you know, I needed that was a really good source to say this person is is notable. Mm. Yeah. So Ian, can you um can you 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 mentioned earlier uh, the perennial sources list, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got it pulled up on the screen. Could you maybe kind of talk us through what is the difference between this and a Wikipedia article about a specific newspaper? What are we looking at here? So these are so there's there's the reliable sources um, notice board where mm -hmm. discussions come up fairly regularly about is this a reliable source? Is this a good source? And so what people have done is they have collected sources that pop up over and over and where there's been um, lengthy debates about them, which for the most part came to some conclusion. And so these are crowdsourced from a community of Wikipedia editors as to is this a good source or not. And one of the important things with these discussions is they're not votes you need to make a you need you, you need to make your case using using evidence mm. so to me this is the best source of information about the reliability of news sources yeah bigger ones that that's out there so I've tried to kind of scroll to a place where we can look at I mean the red indicates that something is not a good source green indicates that it is and yellow is like maybe sort of in between so I've just kind of picked a, a view where we can look at, at three of them and maybe you can can just kind of talk us through what the what the fields are that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, can you see my screen or? I can. Um, so the first field is the name of the publication yeah. with a link to it or link to an article about it. The second one is a summary of a symbol to say good, not good, you know, sort of continue, stop, approach with caution. Yeah, and that's tied to the color coding I just described, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and then you have a link to the discussions. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so that's so here where it says 21D. So that is a, a link to discussions. Mm -hmm. so they're, they've and been what is that? I actually haven't, I've, I'm familiar with this annotation, but I'm actually not familiar with that, what that is, where it's 21 and then a... a so I believe this is a script. footnote to the 21 discussions. I see. So I've just done that in another tab and that, oh, yes, I see it's going down to, okay. So there's so many of them that it would fill up the field. Mm -hmm. So it's listed it as a footnote even in here. Okay. I see. Um, and then the date, the last, the column in the middle is the date of the last discussion. Uh huh. Okay. So it gives you a sense of, is this up to date? Have things changed? And then an explanation. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think so, and this is not, so this is not an actual Wikipedia article. This is, so I, I, I just want to kind of touch on the concept of a namespace, right? Mm -hmm. You know, what we're looking at is like, like this is a tool that Wikipedia editors will use to facilitate our discussions with each yeah. other and it's publicly available, but it's not considered part of the encyclopedia. It's behind the scenes. It's behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But still a yeah. very useful thing for people who are interested in the reliability of news sources. Even if you're not an active Wikipedia editor, I know there are, you know, there are journalism professors that'll use this in their courses and things like that. Um, mm. you know, to and you know, really link to it. I, 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 I find it quite curious actually because, um, sorry, sorry, Sherry. Uh, no, uh, uh, Edwa from, from uni, uni um, mm -hmm. She actually was a professor who joined us uh, for other um, Wikicarry events, and she teaches a class mm -hmm. in rhetoric. And yes. um, and when you're studying rhetoric, you're going to bound to bump into newspapers and um, sources and things like that. So I think, um, yeah, that uh, that would apply to her as well. I think, and, and other professors dealing with that kind of information. I'm sorry. Agreed. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I completely agree. Um, and the reason why, you know, I wanted to jump in was uh, because I, I'm thinking of the fact that, um, 
again, we're looking at the conversation about the, for instance, let's just use the Caribbean as an example. Um, and there are certain publications like, well, publications, but these are more, uh, not newspapers, but these are news sources, which is interesting yeah. because they, they, they don't print, but they are sources of news and people like actual, you know, people who have information go and direct press releases and so on to mm -hmm. these specific sources. But these sources are either viewed as illegitimate or, you know, somewhat iffy. Um, but the way in which one is to navigate that sort of a thing, you know, again, from a region where we don't really have that much in terms of support, for instance, mm -hmm. to really go and have like a, you know, 20 distinct, um, you know, um, discussions about one specific thing, um, it would be quite you know, I mean, the pie in the sky dream, you know, to sort of think of, you know, one person being able to drive that specific thing. Um, but yeah. if there is support behind that, and if there is a movement and a call to action behind that, then I think that's the only way to get that done. So, you know, mm -hmm. and by me saying this, you know, I'm not advocating, you know, that all these sources should be um, legitimized. I mean, you know, we have to go through the rigorous process, of course, you know, engaging with you know, the evidence and seeing how, you know, things shake out. But it is important to understand that, you know, even in that conversation, one has to understand the fact that we need to get these various parts of the, you know, the, the, the media landscape in the Caribbean to a platform like a talk space about reliable sources and having them become, you know, avid parts of the conversation, much like a, a Bloomberg or anything of the sort. So go ahead. And also, you know, if it, if you're a newspaper um, and you know some of the guidelines, then, I mean, the, the guidelines are out there anyway, just in general. Mm. But if you know some of the ways that you're being looked at, then then it can help also to, you know, if you come to something like this, you're saying where you're, you're you can improve in, in the way that that is handled in the way that you're uh, representing yourself. And then it makes it easier for on our end to be able to use a, a source like that because then we know, okay, well, you know, this makes it easier for us to use different sources because um, they fall under those areas that we, we've described. So, um, yeah, what do you think about that, Steve? Because I think it works inversely as well as, as in the other way. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, something I was thinking about, uh, what, while Brandon was talking is, you know, just just even to go back to this concept of the perennial sources list. Um, you know, I think that I think Wikipedia editors tend to be very, uh, very uh, like think very distinctly about what we're presenting to the public versus what we're discussing internally. So the very idea that we have, you know, six discussions about whether deadline Hollywood uh, is a good source to be used for Wikipedia articles. These discussions are conducted, like you were saying, uh, Ian, on the reliable sources notice board. But then separately from that, if you go to the Deadline Hollywood Wikipedia article, it has its own talk page, which is the place for discussion about what goes into the article. Right. right? And if we look at that, I'm going to guess that we probably don't have nearly that level of, well, we do have a fair amount of discussion, but I wonder, you know, it seems to me, my, my guess would be that that discussion is probably very separate from the discussion about whether or not we use it as a source. And I think both could probably, like, if there was some way to have each inform the other, we'd probably end up with better Wikipedia articles about the newspaper and also have a better sense of how to use the newspaper as a source. Like we've got these two things that are kind of happening without a whole lot of cross pollination. And, and I think that's one of the things yes, that a project like ours can kind of facilitate, you know, is, is like making sure that when there's a robust discussion about whether something is a good news source, that that actually informs how we cover it on Wikipedia. I agree. I agree. I think, um, there is quite a fair bit of siloing of the conversation. So you have you know, something cool. happening. Yeah, <laughs> you have something <laughs> going on here. You have something else going on here. And, you know, it's kind no of like, you know, the left hand you. doesn't. Yeah, no one's talking to each other. And, you know, the left hand doesn't really know what the right hand is doing. 
And, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of weird because, you know, you could also have a situation like a Deadline Hollywood where, you know, this is a legitimate source, but at the same time, you know, this source doesn't really have that much of a great Wikipedia page. But at the same time, this is a source that we recognize as being, you know, good for use. And, you know, again, that brings to mind many things because there's also talk and, you know, this also bears into to, to political conversation. I'm not going to go as far, but there's also talk of uh, various other kinds of media that also dance, you know, very delicately on that line between legitimacy and uh, varying into, you know, call it as it is propaganda and how you know people identify that is through that kind of robust conversation where you have 20 distinct conversations about whether or not this source is legitimate which is great yeah and it but might again, be a discussion about like in, in some cases it'll be like you know a certain publication is considered reliable on topics that relate to its core purpose but that when it gets into political commentary or something like that that wikipedia editors have have concluded that it's not really reliable for that stuff right so, it's, so sometimes it's, it's not like yeah. sort of a, a black and white discussion it's like a, well for these kinds of things we can rely on it for these kinds we can't TMZ, agree I agree a example yeah I'm sorry tmz yeah tmz yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and even something? yeah tmz mm -hmm. no i thought ian did you have something that you wanted to mention i saw you no, I was just saying, I was just mentioning TMZ as an example, and apparently it even has its own short, um, uh, its own talk speed? No, its own short link. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. And, 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 you know, I think um, there is a case to be made, if I could reference one in particular here in the Caribbean, um, Loop, um, which a few people, you know, Ian, I'm sure Ian is familiar with that, um, loop, um, it wouldn't, as you can see there, is not a part of the conversation here, which is, you know, something that we're going to have to work on. But it is a source of information. It is what people go to. But the most yeah. important part of Loop News, which is a part of this, you know, company uh, called Thread Media Group, um, they are, you know, actually owned by a global telecom provider. And it's kind of funny when you see a global telecom provider, you know, somehow, you know, talking about information or, or you know, competitive information from, you know, mm -hmm. another one of their, um, you know, competitors in the same space and broadband or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of have to wonder like, okay, is this really something that, you know, they should be, or one should be sort of gleaning information from, you know, as we would say that information were to come from, say, a Jamaica Greener, Jamaica Observer, you know, um, a Trinidad Guardian, you know, a Trinidad Newsday, St. Lucia Online. Um, it, it becomes quite murky. But again, to even put that kind of information onto Wikipedia throws up an issue because it's not even recognized as a source, point yeah. blank. And so if it goes up for review, more than likely, it's going to be expunged from the record. No, no. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. I've seen Loop, at least Loop TT used as a source. I, and I mean, we've, we've gotten away with it. <laughs> we've gotten away with it. But, you know, uh, but even, you know, using Loop, for instance, um, even locally, there is still um, quite a robust conversation about the verity or, you know, the veracity of information that comes from Loop. And I think that reflection also has to happen there, which is why it's also important that in this discussion, and it's something that we've also um, mentioned in previous discussions, it's also great to, you know, include, you know, those within those spaces and really try to understand, you know, what kind of, you know, ideas or what kind of, um, prop, you know, thought processes, what's the editorial process like? how can we then make the case that this is indeed a source or how great or how legitimate is this of a source to whatever point, you know, we can get to, you know, cause it's not going to yeah. be, you know, a broad brush thing, as you said, but, you know, just, just really hashing out those nuances, I think is also equally important. Yeah. So I wonder if we could, I, I, I wanted to, uh, to, draw our attention uh, towards one thing uh, in this call, which is in the, um, in the last 
round of the uh, News on Wiki campaign in 2018, one of the main uh, things that we did that, that supported the campaign and allowed us to draw in both new and experienced Wikipedia editors and have edit-a-thons on college campuses and things like that and give people sort of a place to plug in was that uh, our colleague, this was mostly our colleague Mike Caulfield who, uh, who came up with the idea of News on Wiki originally, he built pages for every state. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, the one that I pulled up is for Oregon. This is one that I worked on a lot. So this is a pretty detailed page. Just to scroll through, you can see there's a whole lot here. Uh, I'm actually gonna, just to give you, I'm, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of these. So I'm gonna just pull up Wyoming, which I believe is a much less developed one. Yeah, so they all kind of started off looking about like this. Uh, and what Mike did was he, he put a link to list of Wikipedia's article, list of newspapers in the state. And then he pulled a list from, uh, I think his main source was this uh, website, Mondo, which, um, which just lists newspapers. It lists newspapers and very basic you know, circula circulation information. I think it's a resource for advertisers if they're looking to advertise in newspapers. Um, so it has you know, very basic information about lots and lots of newspapers. So he pulled the titles from there and then he um, created a, several useful links for each one. So I think he had a script that just generated this for each line. So um, this is just a link to a wiki search on the title of the publication. This is a link to that page on the Mondo Times. Uh, Library of Congress probably has a page, uh, Google Books, right? So it's just sort of automatic searches that make it easy for you to look and see if you can find reference materials you could use to write an article. And then at the end, a link to a draft article. So if you wanted to start, start this off as a draft and then submit it to Wikipedia, as opposed to just starting it directly on Wikipedia, you could easily do that just by linking here. And so just by having this list, like this might or might not be a complete list of all the important newspapers in Wyoming that need a Wikipedia article. Some of these might not need a Wikipedia article. There might be other ones that should be on the list, but regardless, it's a starting point. It gives us a lot of stuff we can look at. And if someone, you know, let's say like a high school teacher in Wyoming uh, is doing a unit on Wikipedia and heard about news on Wiki, you know, all we got to do is point them to this page and they would have a lot of material right at their fingertips to start, you know, figuring out how they would talk to their students about it and what kind of assignment they might build out of it. Um, agreed, agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm actually looking, you know, at you know the structure that you have here, and um, I, and I think Ian could correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm not sure if there even exists anything remotely related to that. I know we have, you know, a list For of the Caribbean. Papers. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was. That's that's sort of what I'm getting at. Is like I, so I started a page, you know, just mm. yesterday for this purpose. Mm -hmm. And this is all I've come up with so far is, uh, you know, there's, um, you know, there is a, there's a template that lists mm -hmm. newspapers in, you know, in various sovereign states and, and territories, mm -hmm. you know, but apart from this, I couldn't find any, you know, and then there, like, if you go to these lists, you'll find, like, if I go to Nicaragua, I'm going to find, you know, there are plenty of red links in there. So <laughs> we could copy and paste those. Right. But, um, but it's not, more structured than that in terms of like there isn't a place that's saying like you know there isn't a wiki project that's already said here are all the red links for the caribbean so i think that mm -hmm. probably for this campaign one of our first projects really ought to be let's build up a more sophisticated page here to work from you know as kind of our, our core resource agreed yeah agreed. I, I think a, a country by country list or territory by territory list would be a really good starting point uh, what I did do, um, I, I shared with uh, Sherry a short list that I'd uh, come up with um, on a few of the more wider known, um, yeah, um, a few of the more wider known publications. But I think the devil is in the details, <laughs> and okay, um, yeah. you know, you know, the more local, more regional newspapers, I think. Um, would be the ones that will really need as much work as possible, especially since, um, you know, looking at something as nuanced, like, for instance, COVID-19, um, the responses, you know, vary by region. Um, and I know here locally, um, you know, what's reported in the newspaper, um, you know, in certain newspapers might be a bit different from, for instance, how 
to give an example how the Jamaica Gleaner might report on the situation related to COVID-19 in Jamaica might be more from a sort of macro, you know, kind of viewpoint, but something like a Western mirror would look at Western Jamaica and look at, you know, the four or five parishes that comprise at this specific right. region and what happens there. And so, you know, whilst they're pulling from the same sources, you know, they're pulling from official sources, they're pulling from the WHO, they're pulling from the Ministry of Health, but the way in which they articulate these things might actually be the way in which people want to reflect certain nuances as the responses in certain areas. And so, you know, as I said, the devil is in the details, but again, the effort, I think, is just absolutely necessary and very critical, especially in the time like we're in right now. Yeah, I agree. What's, what's an example of a U.S. based uh, a, a U.S. based newspaper for a Caribbean audience or an expat? Uh, audience? Sure. So I I see quite a bit of content coming from the Miami Herald. Uh, ah, the Miami okay. Herald, yes. So the Miami yeah, Herald, so even is just quite a mainstream uh, yeah, newspaper, yeah. but that has a focus. Yeah. On that yeah. yeah, and I saw the New York Times has similar, yeah. yeah. The Miami Herald is probably the best coverage of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Miami Herald has, you know, some of the most fantastic coverage of, of the region and being based in the U.S. Um, also, um, as of recent, the Washington Post has taken quite a bit more of a keen eye on situations in, in the Caribbean. So I did see quite a few pieces in the past couple of months about certain situations in the Caribbean coming from uh, the Washington Post. Um, various other publications do publish certain things, you know, from time to time about the region. Um, I'm thinking of certain um, diasporic um, newspapers, but I'm not, you know, I, I, I can't really um, put two and two together, but I'm sure there are quite a few. Um, and also perhaps most likely centered around the key population centers of, you know, Caribbean expats. So that being, you know, the uh, Floridas, the New Yorks, um, in Canada, the Torontos, um, in fact, even in Montreal, you know, of course with the French Caribbean community, um, you know, all these various centers have their own forms of, you know, information sharing and knowledge there. And through using those tools, you know, a lot of people have either you know, disseminated knowledge on certain mediums, for instance, they share on social media, or for instance, they may carry that and take that to Wikipedia, which of course we have to now do the work in terms of making sure that these sources are legitimate and or these sources are reflected, um, you know, in you know, their coverage and reach and, 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 you know, importance. There's definitely a bit of, um, I assume that there were sort of local publications that might have been short-lived within, you know, somewhere like Brooklyn, within, mm -hmm. I don't know what they are and I need to, I need to find, we need to find that out, but I'm mm -hmm. sure that yeah. they, uh, over time, you know, over the last century, there were probably lots of these, Yeah. some of which would be notable, some of which would also be probably valuable sources for, you know, from a historic perspective. I think the internet has changed a lot of that, right? I mean, yeah. I think like I've found uh, just in working on newspapers in Oregon, um, it seems like in the, you know, around the turn of the 19th century, there were a lot of newspapers for like Scandinavian audiences and German audiences. And, you know, they're, like all of that was pretty well covered in histories of the, it's something I find really interesting is that there were also really inf influential black owned newspapers that were not mentioned in the, in the history of newspapers for whatever reason, you know, I mean, I think we know what the reason is. Right. Um, but you know, they would, they would list like, Oh, well, here's the, you know, here's the German community's newspaper. Here's the Dutch community's newspaper, things like that. But I think with the internet now, there's probably less need for that because if you're Dutch mm. and you're living in New York, you might not, you know, you can just go to the internet and read something in your own language. It might not be specific to New York, but at least it's possible for you to get news without, um, you know, without having to physically pick up a copy. So it probably makes the market more difficult. It what, does. What, it does. What always interests me is, but well, I don't know, among the people, among the people I interact with on Facebook, there's people often share from the Atlanta Black Star. There's no TV <laughs> article yeah. on it. And I don't know if this is a reliable source or not, 
it seems pretty good, but I just don't, just don't know. know. Yeah. And it's not just it's not just that there's no article. It's not even I'm not even seeing it mentioned in articles. What if it's, it's in quotes a here? source? I see one. I see. Yeah. So I see a few. Yeah. So there are a few mentions. Um, but largely speaking, I mean, mentions are one thing, but having them be documented is, is, is another. It's not really talking thing. necessarily about the paper. Yeah. Oh, it's, right. It's right. Used as a source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I mean, there, there, there are. Sorry, Sherry, go ahead. I said, hopefully we can get more lists uh, created for sure, at least. Agreed, 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 agreed. Yeah, um, you know, again, these are, you know, just, it's just a small, you know, very brief, um, you know, kind of rundown of how, you know, influential certain newspapers are in terms of um, telling the stories of the Caribbean in the United States. And then also linking to black owned newspapers in the wider United States as well. Um, but, you know, again, it really comes down to an issue that we have, broadly speaking, as it relates to just how invisible um, these sources of knowledge have been. And of course, not through, you know, the, the uh, you know, efforts of, of people of color, but of course, we can all take a hint as to what exactly would have been the cause of that. Um, but, you know, we're now having to do this additional work and what now um, what the, 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 you know, kind of interaction of the comms is, so we have all this, you know, that we need to do and all this work that has to be done. And now comes the task of proving the, the worth of including these publications, you know, in the wider conversation. Why do these publications matter in the grand scheme of things, you know? Um, and I think a great thing to point out here is the fact that, you know, these publications would have been around at the time of a Marcus Garvey, for instance. I could give you an example. A Jamaica, um, a Jamaica Gleaner would have been around during the time of Marcus Garvey. It was actually founded by, um, you know, uh, some British settlers that came to Jamaica and, you know, somehow found a newspaper and then migrated to Texas. And now they have a whole, you know, town named after them called the Cordova, Texas, actually. Um, so you have... <laughs> There's a type one chronicling America. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so you know there 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 exists um, you know that imperative of proving you know how important these sources of information are, and you know either through other the, the demand of the supply side, and when I make reference to that, I'm talking about you know those who require you know the legitimization of these sources of knowledge, and these sources of knowledge actually taking the time to make sure that those large repositories of knowledge recognize the work of which they do. So that, you know, requires, for instance, ensuring that, you know, the, the, the work that they do, you know, meets a certain standard. You know, if it is a weekly publication, you know, how visible is this weekly publication? Um, is this weekly publication, you know, um, for instance, is it you know, propounding a specifically slight, you know, viewpoint, like how do we engage and how do we then show and share the importance of this with the world? And I mean, you know, you can't just look at it from one side, you have to look at it on the other side. And I think, um, you know, that's the work I'm, you know, interested in doing. I mean, I don't think it's too, you know, difficult to sort of show and to, you know, tell people or to make people understand the importance of Wikipedia in or global context, um, the question now becomes, how willing are you to make yourself visible and shown and a part of the conversation of the global community? Yeah. yeah. I might have been wrong with right that, which just looked odd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually noticed just now uh, something that, I, that is, uh, I think, an interesting you know, something that, that, that we run into pretty often is it looks to me like, you know, just doing this search, I came to the Miami Times online. I don't know anything about the Miami Times. Obviously, the mm -hmm. Herald is the one that's, that's well known, right? But if mm -hmm. the Miami Times is, is considered a reliable paper, it looks like they've picked up a story from the Atlanta Black Star. And mm. that's one of the things that we've listed on this draft, um, draft of what 
notability criteria would make sense for a newspaper is like if it's content is picked up by other papers that are considered reliable, then that's a good, you know, it might not be like, yes, that definitely means it's notable, but it's a, it's a point in its favor. Mm -hmm. right? I think I forget mm -hmm. exactly where we, um, we have that in the list, but I think it's, it's somewhere in here. Um, Miami Times does have a Wikipedia article. Uh huh. Good. Okay. Found in 1923. Great. Mm. So maybe I'll make a, so as I, I I've been just kind of working on this list as we've been discussing. I uh, discussing. I added the Atlanta Black Star, and then I found you know one page that might be useful in assessing, assessing it. And I'll put another line here, and I'll say, article picked up in. And then, of course, this, you know, like we were discussing before, this is in the Wikipedia space. This isn't a Wikipedia article. So, you know, what I'm doing is, yeah, it's kind of messy. You know, it's just, I'm just sort of putting stuff as I find it to come back to later and like look at more closely, but that's okay. It's not, we don't have to live up to the standard of what a Wikipedia article is here. It's sort of like right. a shared workspace. So that's the sort of thing I'd, I'd like to, you know, really, you know, if, if, if all of us could put a little bit of work into that, um, the Caribbean page and this this one on black owned newspapers. Um, it's really going to make it easier for us to kind of invite other people into our campaign as it goes forward. I agree. I agree. I agree. Um, so I, so thank I, you so much guys for coming and uh, sharing. Yeah, no, go ahead, Sherry. And there'll be there'll be more opportunities to come. Uh, I know you guys came on to kind of help shed light on things for us. And we'll also be trying to connect with more of the Caribbean community to keep this work going. Um, so it'll be exciting to see what we end up with at the end of this campaign. Uh, it's running until February. Um, so we have a good amount of time to fill in the blanks and the gaps as it were. <laughs> um, so I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, thank you, Sherry. <laughs>